comes time to 5v5, Azir I really like. Rel to, see, to have the initial engage. These are two ADs without dash. You have that start. You have that follow-up there from the Azir, and it's something that can put pressure on them. So as long as they can now draft from blue side a strong 2v2, a support that is going to be really powerful for carry to keep them relevant in the, in the lane, I think they're going to be set up really well. Rel event? <laughs> There's also an opportunity here to okay, go for medic. a strong mid jungle, right? You can take the Wukong here, but if you don't ban away yeah. the Silas, I think you can go for Silas here for Knight as well. Yeah. Knight is a phenomenal Silas player, and you set up for what could be a case of, hey, we're going to steal away some of these big ultimates, try and use that as the setup, and I think that's where you could try and play through both strengths in mid jungle and bot side. And I think now, JDG have to target the supports. You have mm -hmm. to target what yep. you think is going to come out from Karia. They're actually thinking a very aggressive option. I was thinking when the Varus Ash came through that it was going to be a range support, I think you know, that is going to be coming out, something like the Renata even. You know, especially when you're playing against Wukong and Hard Engage, I think Renata can be very, very valuable. Uh, it is a great pairing alongside, you know, what we've already seen. So I'm expecting Renata to get banned as the last ban here from JDG, or I would be kind of shocked. Yeah, and it's interesting that this is the game that JDG are pulling out the Wukong for Kanavi, right? Because we did talk about the Vi in the first two games. I like this way more. Those were Wukong angles for JDG as well. The three of us were talking behind the scenes. Um, so I also like, and it is his signature pick, right? It's a pick, again, if you've been watching the LPL domestically, um, you do not give Kanavi this Wukong pick. So it's nice to see him I back mean, on that. And then Bard banned out for Karia. Uh, oh. Another thing it's that gotta they be don't want to play though, against. No, like because yeah. if, if you're showing Wukong, the one thing you are showing is hard engage, right? Yeah. So you have to have some sort of a dive buddy alongside it. Wukong doesn't really work as solo dive, so I just feel like it's such a strong Renata angle for T1, and I'm a little bit worried that JDG maybe overlooked that. Yeah, the Bard is strong because it's low mobility ADs, but it's a weaker laner than the Renata, and I think Renata is going to set up Gumiyushi for success in the five v fives. Especially when, as we were talking about, they already banned the Akali. I think they're probably looking at a Silas, and if you then go mm -hmm. even more heavy into that. Time, that could be the angle. So maybe this is the pivot going, hey, look, we're going to take the Talia. Yeah. In theory, works well against the uh, the Callista. And then it makes it a little bit easier for us to not fully have to go in towards this. We're just going to be melee range with you. It's so interesting because the other side of the angle is is maybe the JDG think, okay, even if we're not as good in 5v5, we can pound it in lane so they yeah. can't go it, right? And so now that's the evaluation the T1 has to make. And they're going to buy themselves a little bit more time to actually choose. It could also just be rail support and we could be kind of getting baited. Um, but we're going to have to find out what that final pick is. And does T1 think that something like Renata can survive the lane and punish it. Oh, to me, it's just going to be the Renata, yeah. Th yeah. This, this feels so obvious because it's such a strong pairing with the Kalista. Again, I think you need a dive buddy with the Wukong. So I think JDG have kind of telegraphed what they're doing in the draft a little bit too hard. And I almost don't care what JDG pick on five. I favor T1. Yeah, I mean, I also think another thing that we haven't mentioned yet, but obviously this is Zeus's massive like blind pick, right? He's like yeah. Aatrox. That's fine. Renekton, I'll take oh it. no. Oh boy. The, the, I the saw red side advantage, yeah. oh no. I saw Dagda wince as soon as the Renekton hovered. It's not what you want in. from your Why? red side draft. <laughs> I mean, this is exactly like 369 has played this matchup already and lost hard to. Um, to Keen. It just, he couldn't get control over the matchup and they end up falling super far behind. And then as well, Renekton falls off so much harder than Aatrox does. If you can't make this pick work, it just falls off a cliff after like 15 minutes in comparison to and the to Aatrox. Me, red side, the whole advantage is counter pick. Yeah. If you told someone that it was Renekton versus Aatrox top, you wouldn't know which one picked blind. True. Yeah. Okay, so we have Azale who's heavily favoring T1. He doesn't even care about the top. <laughs> I don't Emily, care! Emily, do you agree? Well, uh, I like a lot of the answers that T1 have. I'm also really curious to see what they'll do level one. Okay, let's see. I think a huge portion of this game def depends on Knight. If you can try and separate out these team fights, that could be an angle for them to actually try and attack. Otherwise, yeah, I think T1 are in a really good All spot. All right, let's see if Blue Side continues to reign supreme or if JDG break that trend back to the casters. Thank you very much, Shox. Getting into game now, looking at these drafts, of course. You heard it, T1, more conventional. Feels like the safer draft overall. Maybe stronger overall as well. But see <laughs> what JDG can do in this matchup. I mean, Renata Callista has been pretty dang good at this tournament. And having the ability to have such a wide ranging counter initiation tool here, not only the Renata, but also the Azir. There's so much flexibility on the T1 side. Definitely does seem like they got a good setup. But the Talia here, we'll see how much work Knight can do. That rock field can be super annoying with so many champions having dashes here. See if JDG can try and snowball. 
And what I want to highlight as well is that we have already seen the blueprint for what a win of both of these two teams like. I think T1 are always going to look for early leads, whereas JDG are looking for the mid-game fight. And you can look to connect your League of Legends account with Prime Gaming to grab the exclusive Brom W emote. Uh, you might have some time here because T1 seem uninterested in contesting this five-man level one. Instead, they will play some counter vision on the top side of the map. I mean, I always love this, going for the level one invades, the priority here. First two games, T1 super lopsided for the level ones. Really, really big openings for them, even though they ended up losing game number two. But this one, JDG take matters into their own hands. Oh, they do have vision. Kill it, kill it. Okay. Yeah. And of course, it's really tough to fight level one, especially against Hail of Blades Varish, Hail of Blades Ash. Incredibly powerful level one overall. Yes, close oh, to strong, but the raw burst damage is big. Of course, owner has been spotted out. Baker now on the way in. The call has been made. Potential 5v5 in the brush. Owner being chunked down here. The top think, laners will lane, but everyone else here. I don't think you can do this really as T1 unless there's massive damage sustained from the red buff, because Talia is so good level one also. I don't know. What, they're just kind of watching here. T1 here to spectate how JDG take a red buff. They do it well, T1 learn, and are forced to walk away. Bit of a disastrous level one, all things considered, because now Owner, is he even going to be able to grab level two here? No. Nice. Konavi takes away a bunch of the small ones here. But yeah, I mean, not only the Ash Varus, but also the Talia over Azir in the level one. Big priority there. And it means that JDG accomplished their goal. They can split the map for this bottom lane that has been crucial. And we are straight up back to spring. We're just healing level one to try and gain control of the wave. And it is Ruler and Missing that are able to get the early lead. And it's very concerning if you're a T1 fan right now because there is no cleanse in this bottom lane. Yes, you have the bailout, but when level six rolls around with the Ash, with the Varus, the setup is so easy on the bottom side. Gumiyushi has to be very careful. Ah, level two Wukong tower dive. I don't know about the sound of that, but they've got a big wave. T1 are still level one. Can Guma and Karia try and snipe some minions to get level two? Trying as quickly as they can to lock down some of these two level two now going in. Kanavi, good damage down onto Guma. Ruler flashing out of safety, ticking and burning, but he oh, will stay standing. Oh. Missing! Gets taken down! Karia! A godly play to hold on to the bottom side. At the same time, though, Guma, the one that you want to kill, you want the minions on. It's sitting on one CS. JDG trip over their own feet here, though, in the bottom lane. They try and dive it. The level two advantages, but Caria comes up huge on the Renata. Damn. That is a, the cor corporate takeover right there, man. <laughs> this man not allowing anybody to get through. Out of all the four champions in the bottom lane, if you told me Renata got the double kill, it's a least likely one for me to believe you. But that and, said... And he's going to get all the... He got all the minions at the tower afterwards, too. So there's going to be a bunch of extra experience. We're actually going to see a support higher level than AD carry this game because of the kills, because of the big minion wave that was stacked up there. That's another thing when you're going for these early tower dives. A, a big part of why you do it is trying to uh, deny those large minion oh. waves and... Kanavi's back again, all right. Yeah, because this wave state is so doomed for T1. They need to try and fix it, but they don't know where Kanavi is. And I love this because there's nothing for him to gain on top of the map. You know Owner is going to invade that side, but unless Owner makes his way Carry down... Carrying no flash. They got to... Carrying no flash, and this Giant's belt is good, but he's slowly getting chipped away. Kanavi in the area, just the shadowing in case the gank does come through. Happy with this lane state for JDG. And I think the thing here is, I don't know... They don't know where Owner is... And if you do get caught up in a 3v3, can go either way. And bailouts in those situations can be really big. Now, though, after they've been able to push it out, they should be fine here. Uh, retreat back to your Krug skill. The red side jungle camps have respawned. And here's another look at how they started it out onto Guma Yushi. And they do get him, but Karia had immediately gone over for Ruler there. Missing flashes after the second, uh, or the extra tower, Otto was already in the air, so he dies even after flashing, and Carrier is able to take down the kill on Varus as well, regardless of cleanse. Yep. The handshake was a bit too firm there for KDG. <laughs> we're, not, we're not a fan of that <laughs> one. <laughs> He's got a firm grip. <laughs> Man's got some strong forearms. Put him in there. Man, yeah. look at the CS, though. 43 for Ruler. So the 16 now of Guma trying to scrape together those minion waves. Carrier, of course, got a bunch of the experience from all those minions that was there, but denying them to the Callista, to that snowballing AD Carrier.
Definitely huge. It's also Kanavi who picks up the kill, and particularly on his Wukong, this man has been able to carry so many team fights, and him getting an early lead is going to be really big. So even though Carry was able to pick up the kills, I think you're still very happy with that play as JDG. Just means that Carrier should be getting to uh, what I assume will be a Radiant Virtue very early on. We'll see if he's able to utilize that in some of these mid-game fights uh, that surely are going to erupt around the possible Dragons. Although this first one with the tempo as it is, wouldn't be surprised if Owner is able to pick this on. They have mid lane prio, bot lane prio as well. Kanavi on the top side as well, so not much of an angle to contest on this one. JDG will know what's happening, but they're not going to burn any resources instead. Content to give up the Chemtech. See what the soul is going to be this time around. We're going to need to wait for one more dragon at least, however. And right now, in terms of gold, JDG are sitting pretty. T1, obviously, the big boon they got on the bottom side. Uh, lackluster in the grand scheme of things, even if it did look good to see Carrier get the double. Got to say, though, last time, Kanavi getting some early kills worked out pretty well for JDG. And he is on his signature Wukong. Him and Levi are the two junglers worldwide that did not give up on this champion, even after the, the jungle nerfs to Wukong came in. And at World so far, 7-1, and one, the record for Wukong. Yeah. And I mean, especially if you're going to get to that Divine Sunderer spike sooner, we talked about what Vi can do with it. Wukong can do like 10 times more, and that is very concerning for the side of T1. They need to be clean in their execution and careful around the potential level 6 plays from this JDG lineup. The Wukong, the Talia, their ability to move around and set up these walls could be incredibly disruptive for anything T1 try to do. There is also, which we haven't really discussed yet, and I don't think it's as strong as it once was, but Renekt and Talia is such a lethal combination when you get to the mid-game fights. And we do see that 369 in isolation has been doing a really good job of using the early power of the Renekton to keep Zeus on the back foot. And T1 haven't really shown yet that they're able to win a game where they don't get the early lead after the team fighting from JDG in game number one. And right now, it doesn't look like T1 have found any early angles in this game outside of the Dragon specifically. Have to see what it looks like as we get closer and closer to fights. Harold spawning in five seconds here. For now, topside pressure in favor of JDG. See if they try to level it as Kanabi is currently clearing out the Wolves. 369 going all in with the Dominus here. It looks like just trying to get some pressure. Threat of the all-in not quite there yet. Forcing out the World Ender from Zayas and the Flash coming out from 369, respecting the potential follow-up there on the Darkened Blade. Yeah, really good movement there from Zayas using his ultimate with the burst of speed and the extra space there. Goes back in, forces the flash solo. I mean, Zayas has, has really had some good advantages so far. Let's see though, JDG will take the opportunity here to slip on in as we call up Caria, the real powerhouse of the bottom lane. A level six Caria, courtesy of the early play, has the uh -huh. XP advantage, missing trailing behind, but isn't going to do a lot. Ruler, however, looking for the all in the 1v1. Kumuji, nice flash to get away from the piercing arrow in the three stacks. In the meantime, fight on the top side, 369 and Knight comboing together, catching out Baker, Kanavi getting one, and spin goes the monkey, the Cyclone coming through just in time to keep the fight going, but Zeus is not down yet. Zeus looking to fire back, JDG could be in trouble, missing out firing forward. He's got level six, but does he have the mana? The Herald does drop in the end, Knight still standing, the flip back is clean. It's Slimic missing! He gets the kill, he gets the red buff carry, and now running for his life. Flash over from Knight to safety. Still standing, ticking down, backing. Hostile takeover oh. will not connect. Handshake will not connect. It's an absolute mess of a fight on the top side. But in the end, it is T1 that pick up the Herald. They'll get that, but outside of that, as you're saying, so many summoners being blown. Kanavi, 369, Knight missing. Uh, and Zayus as well, Faker as well. All these cooldowns will be down for the upcoming fight. Oh my god, it was so messy. And Carrier was holding his spells for so long just for the ultimate and the handshake at the very end not to even connect there. He did pick up the kill for T1 and he picked up the Eyeball Herald though. And he's got a bounty on his head now. 300 gold on the back of that support player. This is lore accurate Renata that we're seeing here <laughs> from Carrier, bringing in all the gold for himself. But if we look at this fight, it starts off with Faker already getting blown up by that uh, Talia and Renekton combo. And then you see the focus here on the 369 from T1 side. They do get him. As they're trying to chase him off here, Karia still holding his ultimate. They feel like they've got Kanavi dead to right. They pop the Herald here. Owner's able to grab that one before he goes down. And then Karia can actually go pick up the eyeball even with the red buff missing in his face. 
Ooh, Knight actually barely surviving and his flash gone as well. And it's actually the smite on the Herald that gives Owner the level up, which allows him to then magnet storm and stay alive for a little bit longer. Otherwise, that could have gone way worse. But it is still JDG to pick up the lead right now. Sayus doesn't have flash available. And Kanavi going to be looking for a dive Five, here. No reinforcement for four. T1. Ulti up and available for the Wukong. Waiting, buying his time. Extra healing coming in, but Zeus is going to get a chance to use it, holding on for now, but immediately 369, finding the kill. JDG a successful dive on top. All right, what is going to be the answer on the bottom side of the map? They send Rel down there, but look, JDG have already pulled their bottom lane all the way back from the tower. They had the controller in there. Uh, in the jungle to see them come for the invade as well. As Dragon is spawning, JDG are getting turret plates on top side. There's also Knight who already rotated over, knowing that a dive could be in the works. But with Talia shadowing towards that Cover. side, can't actually do it. So T1 will get a Drake, but they're paying so heavily for it. And JDG do have an Ash Arrow angle plus a Varus uh, ultimate, but looks like they don't want to do it without Kanavi. Uh, having his ultimate available for the Wukong, so they'll give up the objective in exchange for the huge bounty of gold on top side. So many turret plates taken off of that dive. And the thing we have to keep our eye on now is where is this Herald going to go? In the back pocket of Carrion, not ideal. Is he's not going to be able to move between every lane in the same way that Owner would, but might shift his attention to the top side of the map as he starts to wander up there now. Owner coming in tow right behind him. Might try to break the top lane matchup open. And Zayus, some incredibly dominant performances on this Aatrox in the quarterfinals, continuing to go for the lethality route. His bread and butter, see what he can get done. It's also, again, Kanavi having such a big impact and utilizing these early kills extremely well. This is a level 10 Renekton. and doesn't have Dominus, but does have Gore Drinker available. And Kanavi's on his way. I really feel like Wukong has been the most underrated pick at World so far. T1 are going to go for the dive. Kanavi's going to try and answer. TP now coming in, 369 staying alive for now, no dominance. The Gore Drinker healing now coming in, but Zeus goes in just in time. Hostile takeover will not connect on the real Kanavi. They're still focusing on Zeus. The bailout will not be enough. And those like, kill Kanavi, not quite! Shattering Strike. A bit more damage going through, but at the end of the day, it's a fizzle. They get the kill on the top side, one for one, top laner for top laner, but it's missing, and Ruler looking to extend their lead on the bottom side. Herald now dropped, trying to give gold to Faker. And they do spot Kanavi there. Faker should be able to at the very least benefit from some of the gold that is going to come through here. But it's still JDG who are able to get this bot side lead and make it even bigger. Look at the gold lead here. We're looking at almost 1k advantage for Ruler. Well executed defense on the top side for JDG. A character down and they still get the one for one trade plus allow for the extra money here. And remember, remember that coming into today, JDG were the only team in the top four with an average gold deficit at 15 minutes in the game. They were not a powerhouse landing team, but today the story is starting to change. And we can see T1 going for the play here is missing, throws out the arrow, and we can see how this unfolds. And it is actually the arrow that ends up being big because Zayas otherwise can just get out there, might be able to survive, and then T1 can take a big win, then use their fret and try and play for a Herald play afterwards, but instead, they're not able to take down Kanavi. They don't get the bailout resets, and it's JDG that gets out ahead. A really good Kanavi clone there. Kanavi now going in the arrow just around the corner. The bar assault's going to be there as well. Keep your eyes on Ruler. Where is he going to throw it? Owner trying to bake the play out. Kuma keeping his support alive. Does not want to give over the 3-0 shutdown to the side of JDG, but JDG keeping the pressure up, keeping their eyes on the tower. We'll focus down that objective. Yep, the damage is enough for them to take down the tower. Kanavi invested his ult, he invested his flash to escape, not give over the extra kill. Their counter jungling is also successful. They are on a roll here, JDG taking over. And after how game number two went, it's hard to imagine how T1 can stand up to this team fighting power. The early game has been exceptional, but particularly with a composition where you have the Kalista, that is, as we see here in the lane economy snapshot, uh, 900 gold behind. It becomes so hard to play out these mid to late game fights, and the only gold is on Carrier, which, you know, he's going to feel great about, but T1 as a whole, not so much. And we start to feel again this game kind of slipping away as we get to the fight at Harrow. And crucial that T1 have been able to grab the first two Drakes. They have not gotten nothing in the early game. Getting a third, moving up to Soul Point on a Cloud Soul, feel pretty good. But I don't think JDG are going to give them an angle. They're so far ahead now, they don't have to concede much. Of course, not in a great position. <laughs> well, uh... Yeah, I was going to say, not in a great position to contest <laughs> this Herald. And that's why I didn't say concede nothing. 
I said concede much, because they will have to give that one up. <laughs> See if the same is true of the Drake, Mr. Laffy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, who's laughing <laughs> when JDG come to town? Honestly, I want to see about the monkey on the top side here, because Kanabi's going for a lane gank. Is he, was he just covering yeah. covering a possible play here? Because they did get Rift Herald alert, uh, so they know, and it's kind of just allowing for the possible play here to counter. As Ruler snipes that, I think, snipes, yeah, snipes the scuttle away from owner not able to pick that one up. That actually is going to be really big because in 40 seconds, T1 have a basically must-win fight where they set themselves up for Soul Point. It allows you to play towards the top half of the map with much more freedom, allows you to give up maybe a Dragon so that Zayus can get an inner and get back in a position where he can actually threaten the backline of JDG. We'll see if T1 is able to get the fight because if you look at the cooldowns that are available on JDG, it becomes really, really hard to consistently lock someone down, even with the power that Rel has. I want to see. Since T1 have been able to get early access into the river here, Renata can shine. If you get an ultimate, you can cover either one of these entrances into the river, and JDG right now are funneling on through. They're going to be forced into one of these kind of confined areas. Ruler zoned away from this choke point here, has a bit of vision just to spot out the T1 lineup. T1 now trying to take control of the mid lane. JG have pushed in through the bottom lanes. They is clearing that wave out, but the poke from Ruler are going to start to hurt if they take too long. Need to pick their moment aggressively. JDG now again moving in, fighting slowly, diligently. Eyes on carry, eyes on the hostile takeover to maybe be the difference maker in this fight. Zayus on the flank, Faker over the wall. Objective getting lower and lower. The Weaver's wall coming out, isolating owner. Might go for the 50-50, but it's absolutely psycho flashes over the arrow. Faker oh. goes in! It's incredibly clean! JDG with the counter punch. Can they get anything back? Ruler on touch on the backside. Dragon still standing, but owner will take that away too. My god, what an engage from T1! Owner, you magnificent beast! What in the world? He makes the engage happen and he secures the dragon. T1! Whoa! My favorite story about Owner too is that his name is actually Wonder because he has so much pride in being on T1. Owner, Zeus, and Gumayushi, they came up, all of them, through the T1 system. Rookies and Academy, all the way to the main roster, and look at this, all the way to the world stage, over the Ash Arrow, him and Faker get the double initiation and a wipe those JDG members off the map. And we see the value of the Renata come through yet again. There is no counterpunch for JDG. Not able to actually re-engage there. Can't assist Kanavi as he tries to get on the hell, uh, on the back line. And wow. now, gold almost equalized here. You can see Busan come alive. No <laughs> surprise to say that uh, T1 are the local favorites here. The gold within touching distance. Now T1 have set themselves up on soul point. A crucial fight. Just getting the dragon would have been good enough. But they take the whole thing. They even up the gold and suddenly got quite the game on our hands. This series is so fun. These team fights are so good from both sides. Last game, JDG pulling out some miraculous moves. Some clean movement from Ruler. This, this one, though, man, that engage over the top. Faker and Owner from different angles. And, and I think big for Owner after kind of a lackluster game, too, in a game where Kanavi oh, is pulling further oh. and further ahead. Individually, though, he's still quite weak. 3-6-9 oh. slices. He'll get no dice. And he'll be forced to walk out of this one. Good patience from Owner. The juke, the juke, the sense. They know the danger is there. He jukes him back. Can Not they SCP. Lock up there. Carry taking a big chunk of damage. Red buff taken away this time by owner. See who else on T1 wants to go for this one. T1 regaining their composure after a pretty difficult early game. Knight will take a tower on the top side of the map. JDG holding on to a gold lead, but T1 feeling a lot more confident coming into the next dragon fight. Two and a half minutes away. Baron spawning in four seconds. Both sides take it pretty quick. Although the lethality Varus actually puts a pretty big damper on any hopes JDG has for bursting it down. And, oh, Zayus? Zayus going in on a ruler. <laughs> ruler caught Stop. shopping. Oh, no. And he gets the dust blade. It's too damn clean. Kanavi trying to get something back, but it might be too little. Too late. The flick back coming in. T1C, their window of opportunity. 
Infinity Berserk, both ADs just hitting each other. Knight now running. T1 taking the exchange. They can turn right towards Baron. Kanavi has no health. That's the ruler spot. That man has been caught there so many times. And now T1 trying to start up the Baron. We'll see if they can take it. Kanavi, he's healing up. No trying clash. his best. You trying to clone over the wall? The Weaver's wall through the midst of everything. They have vision. T1 focused on the objective. They have the Ren Smite combo. There is no reason they should give this up, but Kanavi might might just be able to take it. They're now trying to burst it down. The push over the wall doesn't connect, but it does not matter. T1 get the objective. Kanavi into the pen, and he will get taken down. 369 forced to run for the hills, and T1 have turned the game on its head. 369 running for his life, but Zeus is here. Look for the slice. Try to double dash through one. Not able to get the second, the Q3, the Dark and Blade cutting down. But now Ruler, maybe he can get more in the fight. Ruler not running down Zayas. Owner now running. Ruler trying to make up for the previous mistake. JDG looking to take the fight. Owner overstaying, over commitment. Baker hit by the arrow. The fight doesn't stop. T1 hold on to the Baron. But JDG fighter back. And it is 369. The crocodile stays alive throughout so much there. It's a negative Red Bull Baron power play. And more importantly, it might inhibit T1 to actually set up for the soul. Whereas normally that should happen 100% of the time. Look at Knight, the amount of damage he does, the double knockback, and then T1. They win the subsequent fight, but they go too far. Yeah, look at Guma and Karia's health so low here, trailing on the backside, while the rest of the T1 members trying to play off pressure, trying to chase down the Crocodile. Knight and Missing come in, Karia gets deleted from the outside, and then Ruler here, peeling for 369, keeping him safe. 369, baiting him in, Q healing on the outside, then the stun onto Faker almost was enough to chain into the seismic shove, but not quite enough, they just get his flash. And there was a big Whoa. miscommunication because Faker was backing while the rest of the team was like, oh, it's fine, we got 369, and they most certainly did not, but T1 still have the Baron buff available and should be able to set up for the soul point. Flash available on Knight, potential for playmaking is big, Kanavi caught out, so he was trying to run him down, T1 taking control of the area, eyes on the soul, their number one prize, but both carries are flashless on the side of T1, they have to play flawlessly. If they miss position even once, it could cost them. Missing his alt up and available. The Ash can find an angle, it can all fall apart. Zayas, not out a bit here, forced to retreat. Dragon, objective, getting lower. Weaver's Wall bringing Knight into the fight. The entire team split. Arrow, Arrow going wide. That's massive. 369 going to the pit, trying to isolate, take out the jungler. T1 now need to turn. It's the hostile takeover, connecting. Who can get the objective? And the steal coming through in time for Kanavi, but the fight is not done. Missing on the backside, vulnerable on his lonesome, but JDG pulling back slowly. Surely they have no jungler, but they have the objective. T1 desperate to get more. They know they need to get something here. Pushing in. 369 over the wall. Knight continuing to poke. It's diligent. It is controlled. 369 now going in, forcing out the ultimate. Missing has been caught out. Missing will go down. The Flash buying a bit more time, buying a bit more space, but he will get killed. It is only a matter of time. Zeus finishing up the fight. At the end of the day, JDG get the Drake, even if T1 get the consolation prize. Successful heist for JDG because not only do they deny the soul and are they able to um, uh, deny, uh, get themselves towards more dragons, but additionally, and the most important part, the Baron buff is now gone. T1 actually weren't able because of the topside play and then this fight to utilize their buff to get more objectives. All right, keep your eyes on Kanavi. He sacrifices his life to go in here and steal the dragon and deny the soul. They're trying to focus on owner. 369 goes for him. They stun him, they seismic shove him, they keep him out. He smites early down to the 300 something HP there and then Kanavi's able to get it. But Kanavi just pops in the middle of T1. The sacrifice. And then they kind of get kited here and chased down. And you know, the, in the end, T1, they all turn their sights towards missing on the back. Kind of respect it from JDG, though. They're trying to kite them out and poke them down, even with four members here. But the Kalista ultimate means they're going to get the full engage onto that Ash. Missing has no mobility. And what is really big is that Missing actually ends up flashing there. Because at that point, I think JDG had already won the play. Missing trying to get more ends up backfiring because Ash in particular, when Faker has his flash available, is a sitting duck for an Azir shuffle. Absolutely is. Oh. Maybe now caught out again just to call it Chronicler. But Kanavi in the meantime just trying to isolate Zayas. He needs to be careful though because the rest of T1 is now coming in. Missing running for the hills but he surely will go down. Faker grabbing the kill. 369 being forced out of the pit. Locked up. Cloud Rift. Taking him out to safety. T1 
Finding the kill on a missing, but not a lot else. Priority in their favor. They're going to get mid first. They're going to get push. One minute and 30 to the Baron. And the main goal here is going to be to try and get control of the Baron, force JDG to face check. And JDG not having control, a lot of their poke from the Talia, from the Lethality Varus, isn't going to be nearly as easy to hit. And it takes away a large part of power for this JDG composition. And we know how many times these games come down to item spikes and they come down to summoner spells. Kanavi not having his flash in that next fight could be massive. Missing, missing his heal, probably not as big of a deal, but that Wukong not being able to immediately find backline access could cost them dearly, especially as each and every member of T1 has their flash up and available. So much tension here in this game to see if they can break it open. JDG dispersed into the 1-3-1 here. Ruler in your ruler position. Trying to hold that wave. Should be calm as T1 get a little bit deeper vision. And it feels like such an important breakpoint because this is the first game that hasn't been very much in favor of one of the teams. Winning this gets you one game away from making it to the World's Finals. This is the most close game we've had so far. T1 do have Dragon Advantage, but JDG have an incredible team fight come themselves as well. And if you look at some of the star players here, Ruler got a lot of the early money. This Varus is on three items with transformed Muramana. This Varus poke is unreal right now. Three item power spike with the Lucidity boots as well. So much cooldown reduction, so much poke damage available here. He's the one who tries to take over mid lane Prush. They're even gonna use Knight's ultimate to try and get some extra damage on tower here. Looks like they don't wanna step up to it. Have to be careful. Maybe not expecting four members of T1 to be there. Zayus walking up to the mid lane as well. The poke from Ruler can be devastating. T1 can't spend too long trading blows in the mid lane against this Varus. Or too long setting up and taking objectives. Topside control, topside vision control in favor of T1. A bit of vision in the pit. I Means JDG don't have to be too scared, but they might be fishing for the angle. Arrow going onto the jungler. Flick back is there. Looking to burst stoner. Looking to taste him out of the equation. The pullback is there for Guma. He will keep carry alive. Fate's call. But it's the fate of T1 to lose this Baron. Zayus playing on the edge here. Step forward. Dark and Blade, Q2 coming out. Just a bit of poke though. JDG looking to take control of the area, but they don't quite have all the vision that they need to walk in. Oh, Zayus is on the watch. They can take him down. Zayus spotted 369 early ultimate to get the Fury up. Knight going over the wall. The flick back flashed away, but Zayus is certainly dead. The rest of T1 now trying to move into the jungle to compensate, but missing, zoning them off as best he can. Zayus, the blast cone, not enough. Back into the midst of the team, and he will get taken down. Ruler now on a rampage. And that may be the angle that they're looking for. Dragon, though, are they going to try and trade Baron for Dragon Soul? They've got Kalista. Looks They're gonna like try it. and rend it. Gumiyushi is gonna try and rend this dragon. They're gonna try and get Cloud Soul in exchange for the Baron buff. And the immediate win gonna be there for JDG. We know how deadly this team is when they get their hands on a Baron. T1 starts off with missing, finding the arrow onto Owner. Ends up going down. And it snowballs from there. The vision control pivotal there because if Zeus goes unmatched and JDG start that up, it might have been another play entirely. The JDG able to pull out at least on the short term. JDG have had some of the most devastating Baron power plays of any team at the tournament. Let's see what they can get done with it because they did pay a decent price here in the form of a permanent dragon soul to the side of T1. Have to be careful, have to respect that soul. But for the next two minutes and 20 seconds, it is JDG who are favored. Not a quite enough members in the mid lane to bully this tower down, but the empowered cannon minions will be more than enough. And again, eyes on Ruler! Kuma forced to flash! Clean arrows from missing this game. Owner has to be careful here. Flick back, not quite going to connect. Owner able to walk this one out. A tier 2 tower in the sights of JDG. They should be able to get this easily. A similar story for 369 on the bottom side. T1 just need to weather the storm. And the heal is good in lane, but once you get out, it is very tough not to have the cleanse. Zayus on the flank. Zayus on the side. TP coming in. Faker looking to make the flank oh. against Ruler. Owner goes in. And again, the combos are clean. The hostile takeover is damn well hostile. T1 looking to leave no survivors alive. 369 to the entire team. will get absolutely nothing. T1 what? in the clutch for two. Damn clean. Baker predicts Ruler's flash. He gets there first. He catches him with the ultimate. It is a clean ace. The T1 is going to go up to match point. And it's Faker that sets it up. Owner that knocks it down.
just when you think that JDG are in total control. It wasn't even about the Cloud Soul. It was a single moment from T1 that gave them this game that set them up for a match point. Missing. He won't be enough. T1 gonna break the base. T1 gonna move on to match point. A clean fight out of nowhere secures them their second game. These players on T1, they've accomplished so much. And yet, of course, everyone knows their main goal, an international championship, has been the one thing that has eluded them. They've talked about in interviews, this might be the last year that they stay together with so many of them being career T1 players to be one step away from reaching another finals is huge. An incredible game from T1, and what a confidence-inspiring moment to turn it back just when it might have been lost. And T1 now moving on to match point after the break. But first, let's have a look at some of the behind